So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, photography P. Is that a bird? X. Dot com. In today's video, I want to talk about focal length. Note you can find timestamps in the description down below. You can also scrub through the video to skip to a more relevant section if you'd like. Also note the accompanying blog post for this video, linked down below, has several insightful visuals to explain these concepts in great depth. So check it out if you'd like some more specific examples. But with that said, let's get started. There are many factors that combine to create the final image a camera captures, but easily one of the most important factors is the focal length of the lens that we use, and it's often a photographer's first decision when approaching a scene. The problem is that focal length is quite a misunderstood concept amongst most photographers, and many beginners inevitably believe it's merely a descriptive term to describe how much of a scene a lens captures or how zoomed in it is. While both of these are true, there's more to focal length like its effects on depth of field or apparent perspective. So understanding this concept in full is essential as it'll help you decide which lens is best to capture your scene or your subject. That said, let's start the discussion by first defining focal length. There are many definitions for this term, but the most common one is that focal length is the measured distance between the optical center of a lens and the focal point of the recording medium. That recording medium is either the camera's digital sensor or its film plane if you're shooting 35 millimeter film or some other similar format. Either way, we measure this distance in millimeters. If you're curious, lens manufacturers create focal length by focusing the lens at infinity, then calculating the point where all the incoming light rays converge. And that point of convergence called the nodal point is where the lens creates a sharp image onto the recording medium. But I want to note that the optical center or the nodal point of a lens is rarely the physical center of that lens. Some photographers believe that's the case and it's not. Instead, it's based on how the optical lens elements or the groups interact to bend incoming light. And that may or may not be in the center of the lens. It just depends on the optical design. I also want to note that only the lens manufacturers can calculate the true focal length of their designs, even though most of them round the advertised values. So as photographers and videographers, we're all at their mercy here. But quick commercial break. Did you know Photographer PX launched a sister company called PXPresets.com? Well, if you didn't, PXPresets.com is going to be your next one-stop shop for Adobe Lightroom desktop and mobile presets. On PX Presets, you can find a large selection of presets to shortcut the process of getting high quality images and consistent branding across your imagery. We have a large selection of styles that are well suited for food, products, portraiture, fashion, beauty, and much more. We're also running a special right now for our mega collection. So if you want to upgrade your entire workflow in one fell swoop, now's a great opportunity. So if you're in the market for some high quality Lightroom presets to shortcut your workflow, feel free to check out pxpresets.com. With that said, back to the video. But with the general definition of focal length covered, let's talk about its relationship to crop factor. The crop factor is a term that accounts for the difference in angle of view between sensors smaller or larger in size than traditional 35 millimeter film. And you have to master this concept since the focal length measurements we use today are based solely on the 35 millimeter full frame sensor size. So you'll want to multiply the advertised focal length of your lens by your camera's crop factor to get its equivalent in full frame. And that equivalent is what you'll use to determine various characteristics about the lens, like its compression, angle of view, and so on. This is also how you'll figure out which lenses are best for the type of image you're after or you're wanting to create. But the key takeaway of this relationship is this. Focal length is solely a property of a lens, and the lens remains the same focal length regardless of the camera it's used on, be it full frame, APS-C, or even medium format. Instead, the size of the sensor alters the lens's apparent angle of view, making it different from the lens's true angle of view, and that change alone is why we ultimately have a crop factor in the first place. This step is here to get the equivalent focal length that accounts for the new angle of view when you're using it on a different sensor size. Okay, so now how does focal length ultimately affect our images and why is it important at all? Firstly, focal length defines a lens's angle of view, which determines how much of a scene it will capture. Shorter focal lengths, like those below 35 millimeters, produce a larger angle of view. This larger angle of view in turn captures more of the scene ahead, hence the name wide angle lens. 
In contrast, a telephoto lens has the exact opposite effect. So a major lesson here is the focal length you choose directly affects how much of a scene you can capture and it directly changes your framing. Next, depth of field. The focal length you use also affects the apparent depth of field in your images. And a wide angle lens has a larger apparent depth of field, producing an effect where much more of the scene appears to be in focus than in reality. This effect makes them ideal for shooting landscapes where you want more of the elements in your composition in acceptable focus, but they're generally not great for isolating small subjects. In contrast, telephoto lenses do the exact opposite. Next, the focal length changes your perspective and your subject's size. These changes are a function of your distance to the subject and the lens's image magnification. Shorter focal lengths, like those below 35 millimeter, have lower image magnifications. This in turn forces you to get closer to the subject to fill the frame, expanding the perspective. And this makes it look like there's more space between the foreground and background elements. It also makes the subject appear smaller in the process, while telephoto lenses do the exact opposite. Lastly, focal length also affects your stabilization, and without proper stabilization, you'll see blurriness and reduction in image quality and sharpness caused by vibrations. The problem is that telephoto lenses increase the appearance of all camera shake due to their tighter angle of view and higher image magnification ratio. And the more telephoto the lens, the worse this problem gets. So you'll want to use the reciprocal rule or a tripod to avoid a loss of image quality. Speaking of stabilization, let's discuss the relationship between focal length and shutter speed. As mentioned earlier, telephoto lenses exaggerate the appearance of camera shake because of their smaller angle of view. And this smaller angle of view emphasizes the relative distance between the foreground, background, and subject. And merely moving your arm an inch up or down can effectively translate to moving several feet over this large distance, which will cause blur in your photos. So to avoid this, it's best to set your minimum shutter speed to the reciprocal of your current focal length. We call this the reciprocal rule in photography. An example, say you're using an 85 millimeter prime lens, you'd set your minimum shutter speed to 1 85th second, or in this case, the next closest third stop increment, which is 1 80th second. Lastly, I wanna mention the classifications of focal lengths briefly. There's a lot of debate about this, but in general, we classify camera lenses into three major categories and five subcategories based on their equivalent length in 35 millimeter terms. These are short focal lengths, which range from eight to 28 millimeters and cover the ultra wide and wide angle spectrum. Next, there are standard focal lengths, which range from 35 to 55 millimeter and consist of mostly standard lenses with an angle of view that matches the human eye. Lastly, there are long focal lengths, which range from 70 to 600 millimeters and cover the medium and super telephoto ranges. But to conclude this video, I wouldn't say it's important for photographers to get bogged down by the definition and technicalities of focal length. What's ultimately important here, just like angle of view, is selecting the right lens that gives you the necessary framing or more specifically, the right angle of view and image magnification that you need for your shot. Focal length as a whole is merely a more convenient way to describe how much of a scene the lens captures so you can better gauge your framing. And that's the best way to think about it really. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the content of it valuable, insightful, and you learned something meaningful here. If you're new to our channel, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. If you have any comments, questions, or feel like I've overlooked something in the course of the video, please let me know down below. I've been your host, Devon Lennox, Photography P. Come.